Okay, I'm creating this video to walk you through Chapter 3 Regular Homework Assignment Questions 9 through 16. It's an overview of the entire accounting cycle. I'm not going to work out the whole problem, but just give you kind of the flow of it since um, several students had questions. I also extended the due date on this homework in case you want to go back and redo what you had submitted. And I will give you three attempts um, just in case you would like to work through this problem and you've already submitted twice. So question 9 through 16 is the entire accounting cycle. You're going to have to record transactions. As I posted on that video, the entire cycle starts with transactions and then it goes to adjustments and financial statements and closing. So you will do all of those steps. But I think what is the confusing part is maybe how you need to post each of those steps into the T accounts. So I would strongly suggest that you start by skipping down to part 10 where you record your transactions. Record the service revenue for the year. And the service revenue is listed up in the top. And this is also a difficult entry for some of you because it has three parts to it. It's not just one debit and one credit. We have two debits and one credit. If you scroll back up to the top or if you want to um, make a, a screenshot of your material or if you want to write it down or print it out, the very top transactions A through G are your regular transactions. H are going to be your adjusting entries. So transaction A, which says in January 24th, you provided plumbing services for cash and on account. So I'm going to debit cash for 15000 and I'm going to debit accounts receivable for 16000 So I'm going to scroll back down to where that transaction um, view transaction list is also another way you could see what I'm talking about. Here's the transactions. It doesn't uh, tell you the amounts there, but I received cash and that was for 15000 And I also provided some service on account for 60000 The word service revenue um, is always going to be a credit unless I am closing out. The revenue account it has a normal credit balance so that first entry looks like this so you enter two debits and one credit i'm going to record the entry i'm going to scroll back up to see it says i record the collection of accounts receivables so collection is a debit to cash and from your accounts receivables i'm going to scroll back up and see how much that was we received forty-eight thousand. so i'm going to debit my cash account and I'm going to credit my accounts receivables. And then I'm just going to record the entry. I'm just going to skip on through some of these. Issuing stock would be a debit to your cash and a credit to your common stock. Record the payment of salaries. This one would be a debit to, if it says um, your expenses for the current period, which it does on D, you pay your salaries for the current period, then it's going to be a salary expense. But I want to note this next one. E says you pay for utility expense of 12000 5000 of that represents cost for 2017. So um, I had emailed a couple of students, and I'm not sure how I... I posed this in the email, it may have come across incorrectly, but you, when you pay your utility expense of 12000 5000 represents cost for 2017. We need to know which is the current period and which is last year. So if you, if you look up here at the top, this is all information for 2018. So when I scroll down, I want to recognize that these are transactions for 2018. These were my beginning balances of 2018. It said I had some costs from last year that I'm just now paying off. So that 5000 was posted as an expense last year. And I'm going to credit um, cash for the full 12000 because I'm paying the expense. But 5000 was already posted as an expense last year. Therefore, it would have also been posted as a payable, something I owed. So on E, it should say you pay 12000 as a credit in cash, but 5000 would be debited from the payable because you already posted it last year as an expense, and the difference is the expense. 
So I believe, again, um, that that journal entry may have come across incorrectly. I'm going to go down here again to 10, and I'm going to post the utilities expense for 7000 the difference, the current amount. But then I'm going to clear out that utilities payable. Uh, to correct that one, utilities payable. Get the right one in there for the 5000 And I'm going to credit cash for the full amount. So again, this payable was something that was posted last year in 2017. I debited utilities expense and I credited the payable. Now I'm paying it off. So I'm going to record that entry. Always hit record your entry. You received cash in advance. You're going to debit your cash and you're going to credit your unearned or deferred revenue. Your homework is using the account deferred revenue. So it should be cash here. Oops. And deferred revenue is the credit. That's important because later when you adjust it. So next, after I have these entries posted, which I'm going to have to go back up to the top and see how much money I had received here. So received cash in advance. That one was eight thousand. I'm going to go back down, and it might be helpful again to print this problem, at least those first top transactions. And I'm going to post these things into the T account. So when I look at the first journal entry, I would go to my cash account and I would put an entry on the left for A, 15,000. I scroll up to the cash account and this drop down should say A. That's the first one. And I have $15,000. Now you want to enter all these beginning balances from this chart right here. So you can see the cash of 4,000 would go in as a debit balance and that might be a good thing to do before you post any of your transactions. Accounts receivable had a debit balance of 9000 in the beginning. We had entry A here for 9000 on account there so it had a 60000 added to it and then we had a credit on entry A to revenue of the total. So go down, scroll down to the bottom and find your service revenue account where we recorded the total of those two debits. Um, so I believe this A goes on that side and we don't need anything here. So it is rather um, time consuming if you did each journal entry first. You can kind of see what accounts were debited and what accounts were credited. Again, this was entry A. We debited cash, so that went on the left of the T account for cash, and we debited accounts receivable, so that also went on the left. But then we had a total credit of 75 to service revenue. You could do all these entries um, and check your work to make sure they're correct before you posted them to the T accounts. Uh, that's just an option. Remember, you can use that check my work twice. So once I have all those journal entries recorded and then I post them all to the T accounts and I make sure I put these beginning balances in, then step three is to go down. We've done then part of nine. We've done all of 10. We're going to go down to 11 and we're going to fill out the trial balance from their current balances. Now, mine aren't going to be correct at this point because I'm not doing the whole problem, but I would go down to, not, to um, 11. I would fill out the trial balance right here. If my cash account had 19,000 in it from the total balance up here on the debit side. See, there it is, the 19,000. And then my receivable says 69. Again, mine's incomplete, so it wouldn't balance, but it should. All my total debits should match to my total credits. And then if it balances, um, or if not, I would check my work either way. Um, and find my errors and correct them. Then I would record the adjustments. Now H is actually, it says view the list of transactions so you have an adjustment for, for depreciation, for supplies, and for revenue earned. Those, again, the accounts here would be the same for everyone. Everyone is going to, when they record depreciation, debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. Fix that one. My amount would be different from your amount. I would find the amount back up at the very top for H where it says 6,000 on my problem. Scroll back down, enter that into part 12. These are the adjusting entries and post that. 
then I'm going to have to do supplies expense. And I'm going to credit supplies. Again, watch your. When I hit enter, it didn't post. My supplies expense number, I'm going to have to again scroll up to the top, or if you have the top data printed, that's very helpful. It says your supplies remaining on hand at the end of the year equal $1,000. So what that tells me is that is the balance. That is not what I currently want to expense. I need to go up to the top and see that my supplies were $3,000. And I look down through these transactions. It doesn't say that we purchased any additional supplies. So transaction A was about revenue. B was about receiving cash. C was common stock. D was salaries expense. E we went over. Uh, F is deferred revenue, and then G was a debit to dividends with a credit to cash. But there's nothing about new purchases. So we take our beginning balance, we would add zero because there were no new purchases, and we would subtract off the ending thousand. The difference then is what our adjusting entry should be for down here at the bottom on 12 when we're expensing, we're showing the amount that got expensed. I would record that, make sure you always hit record entry. And then the last one, I'm going to take stuff out of that deferred revenue account and I'm going to put it into service revenue. I was going to put it into my revenue that has been earned. Again, up here at the top on H, it'll tell you the amount. Of the 8,000 that was paid in advance, 6,000 is earned. So we're going to debit deferred revenue to reduce it. The liability goes down and the earned equity goes up. Now here's the part that I believe students are kind of confused. You now have to go back to the top and post these items. So if I want to view these, there's the three that I have recorded. I'm going to debit depreciation expense in the T account up at the top. I'm going to do and this would be on the drop down adjustment A right there. At the top, it doesn't show that we already had anything in depreciation expense. We did have something 6,000 in accumulated, so that needs to be in the balance of accumulated. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset, so everything that goes in there should be a credit. It's an asset, but it always has a credit balance as a contra asset. Again, I'm getting these from um, down when we did our adjustments in part 12. So scroll all the way back down to 12. Here's the things that I need to debit and credit on my T accounts. I just did transaction one. Now I would debit supplies expense and credit supplies for adjustment B. So supplies, um, I remember had a beginning balance of 3000 we want the debit to supplies expense, which is separate. Supplies expense, this was adjustment B, and it was a debit to supplies expense for 2000 Supplies expense reflects the amount we have used. Then we credit supplies for 2000 and that was again adjustment B. The difference should be the ending balance here, and it is. So once we have all of those transactions recorded in 12, again, you need to go back up to 9 to post them. Then it would create new ending balances in Part 9. All of those T accounts now have new balances. Uh, not all of them, but all of the, the ones that were adjusted would have new balances. You would create your balance sheet again. Your trial balance, excuse me, it's not the same as the balance sheet. You would use those amounts to create the income statement, which always has revenue listed first, and then list all your expenses, all your assets, liabilities, and um, total new equity amounts, long-term assets or equipment, building, land, anything that has a life over 12 months. And then finally, we would have our closing entries. So the three types of accounts we close are revenues, expenses, and dividends. Our revenue accounts have a normal credit balance. So we would debit revenue 
to close it. And we would move that balance into retained earnings. <coughs> now, excuse me, my revenue number is not going to be complete. Um, what I have showing up there is 75000 right now. We didn't have anything prior as a balance, but I know we earned um, 6000 here. So I'm going to go ahead and add that one to um, help with that. That was adjustment C. So 81,000 credit balance. When I close it, I'm going to debit the revenue account. And so this would actually be a closing entry. That drop down should say closing. And it's new balance is zero. <clears throat> so service revenue, revenues, expenses, and dividends should not dividends have a balance after you've done your closing. So again, what I'm showing you is referencing this closing entry here. We closed it for 81000 We moved it into retained earnings. So do your closing entries on 15, but then post them up in the T accounts on part 9. Once you have done that, all of your temporary accounts should have a zero balance. So your new trial balance doesn't list any revenues, expenses, or dividends. That is the problem in its entirety, the entire accounting cycle. So if you have questions after viewing this video, um, please email me and I will walk you through it. Thank you.